Hey, guys. Hey, Kevin. So, so, oh, thank you. We're working on Adam's question. Yeah, we're just talking about it. So, Mauro, you heard this, right? Adam's yes. thinking about buying a house. He's got two small children, and the previous owner smoked for like 30 years. It smells. He's worried. You know, can he fix it? Does he have any risks? Um, Ross was saying earlier that he might. Yes. You familiar with this situation? I have done a project like this before. You have. And honestly, I'm not looking forward to do it again. No. Why? <laughs> what is involved? Uh, you're going to be do dealing with a lot of uh, strong odors and then staining walls. And uh, it's a lot of work to clean up. We started by top to bottom, all surface. Uh, we're going to scrub everything with the uh, TSP solution. And then everything is done clean. Wait, we wait, all surfaces. So all TSP surface. ceilings, walls, ceilings, floor. walls, uh, doors, windows, Moldings, floors, yep, baseboards. Yep. Oh, yeah. The whole thing. Okay. Don't skip any spot. Yeah. So after everything is dry, we'll come back. You know, five days later, with the um, we're gonna use a uh, two coats of primer, an alcohol-based primer. Never even heard of an alcohol-based primer. What does that do for well, us? It's a, a less uh, impermeable than the uh, traditional primer. Really? It makes everything bridge back again. So less permeable is a way of sort of trying to encapsulate those surfaces yes. and then put the paint on top and of it. And then put two coats of paint on paint on top of it, uh. and it's. Ready to go. And what is this going to set Adam back? Adam is going to have a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> Smoking kills. <laughs> well, a job like this, I would say it's about $25,000. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Really? Yeah. Kevin, it's a tremendous amount of work to get to this, to okay. clean this up. So that's yeah. tough news. And so well, what is the science behind this? Like, what's yeah, going so I think on? it helps to define. So there are really three different kinds of smoke, right? You've got first-hand smoke. I think most people are familiar with That's the person who's smoking a c cigarette or cigar. Second-hand smoke is the person who's in close vicinity to the person who's smoking. Third-hand smoke, that's the new one. That's been studied right now for the last 10 to 15 years from the yeah. scientific community. And what that really is, is the chemical residue that's left behind from the smoke. What, what are the chemicals generally, do you know? So we're talking about nicotine, we're talking about tar, and a whole host of other harmful chemicals. Left behind, meaning they're physically left on the surfaces in this house. Yeah, so think of the smoke and think of it leaving behind this residue that gets deposited in all the surfaces of the building. Yeah. And think about that, that, that that, um, those chemicals get absorbed into the actual porous materials of the building. Oh, porous, so, meaning? So think of everything, wood, drywall, your flooring, your carpeting, your upholstery, your furniture, everything. Insulation? Right? Insulation behind the drywall. Oh. So it gets absorbed into everything. And so if you've got, in Adam's case, for someone smoking for 30 plus years in that building, it's gonna get actively absorbed into everything. And then what it tries to do is equalize. So it tries to evaporate back into the indoor air. So after, so let's say, 30 years in this case, is, yeah. are you suggesting that cleaning is no longer sufficient? Because that sounds like it's a surface treatment. Yeah. No longer so. What do you do yeah, then? What, in a long term, uh, you know, the experts say you have to remove all those materials. Come on. I mean, it's, for Adam's case, it would be a gut rehab. It would be crazy. It, oh, my gosh. Yeah. It make okay. 25000 look cheap. Yeah. Oh, so that goes yeah. through the AC vents and uh, electrical outlets yeah. goes all behind the walls and stuff, right? People think that actively cleaning the surfaces, running the fans, opening the windows, putting in new air filters, that's going to solve it. Third-in smoke is a different animal. It's getting absorbed into the actual porous materials of the building. So you say this is new information. Um, how good yep. is the science and who's getting harmed by this? Like how legit is this whole thing? Yeah, so it's only been studied for the last 10, 15 years, like I said, and you know, with kids, it's they're at the highest risk. They're, they have developing bodies and they what the scientists have found is that it can get through the skin. So just like a nicotine patch for someone that's trying to wean off of cigarettes. Uh, they found this in kids who've been exposed to the third-hand smoke? Third-hand smoke, yeah. So there's been a study that looked at kids exposed to second-hand smoke and kids exposed to third-hand smoke, yep. and they both had similar levels of nicotine in their urine. Right, so the kids are crawling around in the upholstery and you know the floors, carpeting, and so it's getting absorbed, and all those chemicals we're talking about get absorbed into their skin. All right, so who's going to notify Adam? <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> you know what? Bad yeah. news for Adam, but I guess better to know than not to know, yeah, and he yeah. can make the uh, the proper decision. Yeah, yeah. Wow, you guys did your homework. Thank you. Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project. So be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button. Make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.